Hi, this is John Mulligan from Search Engine Strategies New York City 2009. I'm here again with Bill Muller from iProspect. How are you, Bill? Excellent, John. So yesterday you were on sort of a 12 deadly sins panel yep. for CMOs, right. all of the things that people always do and should never do, right? Right, exactly. Now we spoke to Nancy Freitas yesterday about this in another one of our videos uh, about how about how CMOs sometimes get their blinders on in terms of their in terms of their search marketing campaigns, and they don't think about they don't think about it outside of uh, outside of uh, a direct marketing model, right? right? Yep. Um, so so how can people fix that? How can people think? But how can people think more comprehensively about offline channels? Sure, no, absolutely. Um, search, search certainly doesn't happen in a vacuum. Uh, CMOs uh, often make the mistake of uh, judging the success of a campaign solely based on the conversions or the revenue that are generated directly through conversions on the website. Whereas, you know, we all know that search is an excellent uh, research channel. Uh, you know, both you and I, you know, probably several times a week go online and do a search for something and we ultimately maybe yep. drives us to a store, drives us to make a telephone call, helps us in the, uh, helps us in the consideration um, process. But uh, uh, if CMOs judge their campaign solely on what converts online and don't develop mechanisms for tracking uh, purchases that take place via the phone as a result of somebody who did research online or take place in a brick and mortar store as a result of research that was done online, they could be drastically underestimating the ROI produced by their search marketing efforts. They could choose to eliminate their search marketing campaign and all of a sudden see their in-store traffic drop by 15% or their phone calls drop by 30%. So uh, those mechanisms are important for CMOs to put into place um, before they make overall judgments about the uh, success of their search marketing campaigns. What would be like one big picture tip that you might give in terms of people, uh, man in terms of people trying to measure offline conversions driven through, or or at least somehow contributed to by, uh, an o an online search marketing campaign? Sure. Well, you know how sometimes you go into a store and they ask you at the register, they ask you what your zip code is. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, do do it do a test if you've got you know 20 stores, choose two stores, one on the east coast, one on the west coast, and for a week ask people who come to the register, did you did you research this purchase online? Uh, take that sampling and apply that, you know, with the statistics that you gather from that sampling across your overall, you know, store traffic. That'll give you, you know, a good proxy for what the value of your search marketing campaign is. Are that's a great tip. Thanks. No problem. Now. Uh, that 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 work that works in well in terms of integrating the online and the offline. That's not something that you can just do on a one-off basis, and that very much ties into another point that you guys kept harping on, which is. Uh, which is something that a lot of people forget. Uh, it's the process, not it's the process, not project paradigm that yeah. you guys are putting forward. Can you speak to that a bit? Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, uh, search engine optimization is not a set it and forget it endeavor. Um, right. The uh, the algorithms of the search engines change frequently. The search landscape changes. Uh, your competitors are out there adjusting their websites and are optimizing their websites and are competing more um, diligently with you. Um, you add products and services, you add news about your um, about your company, and uh, and so all of that you know necessitates that you know you're constantly optimizing your website, you're constantly tweaking things, you're constantly uh, um, you know engaging in best practices in order to make sure that you're uh, that you're competing well with the uh, with the uh, the rest of the search results and uh, to to simply you know. Uh, set the website up, you know, um, set it and forget it. Over time, you know, within within three to six months, most of your um, rankings are going to erode if you don't maintain that process. And so, so, website development would have to be rather rather deeply integrated into uh, into the budget, right? It can't absolutely. it can't just be like something you throw money at, exactly. but something that you have to plan for over a long period of time just, at, at sustainable levels. Yeah, it's, it's just an ongoing line item cost of doing business, right? And what's one more? What's one more tip that you might want to toss out there? Sure, uh, C uh, CMOs um, can tend to be jargon-driven. Um, yes. We all we all like to uh, refer to our products and services the way that we refer to them internally. And sometimes, as you said earlier, uh, CMOs have their blinders on and forget that you know you need to listen to the way that your customers and prospects mm -hmm. um, uh, refer to your products. I mean, the uh, you know uh, the history of our company is full of you know examples of uh, you know you know. IBM targeting notebook when the rest of the rest of the world was looking for laptops and right. uh, you know uh, 3M uh, targeting rubbing compound when the, the rest of the world was looking for something that removed swirl marks um, you know uh, you, uh, people really have uh, CMOs really need to look at their uh, at their web logs see what the uh, the language of their customers are and that's the that's the uh, the language that needs to be used on your website needs to be used in your paid 
search and needs to be targeted in order to uh, capture the, uh, the demand of people looking for your products and services. At that point, at that point, though, that's putting a, that's putting a lot of stress on the CMO, isn't it? They have to they have to like evangelize within their own company about the importance of moving online, yep. and then at the same time they have to turn around and speak in an entirely different language to the people to whom they are trying to sell something. Right, a a absolutely, and uh, and CMOs are not without their own pressures from CEOs, yeah. who think uh, who th who th who think that they know you know they know what the uh, the uh, the secret to it all is, and sometimes there are ego issues and uh, and again, blinder issues about uh, you know uh, referring to th certain things, certain products or services, the way that uh, that people you know refer to them internally, and, um, and and the fact is sometimes you have to go to battle to uh, to, to demonstrate uh, through data, which is the power of search marketing, through data that uh, you need to think uh, and adjust your thinking and uh, adjust your uh, your semantics to accordingly. So that's when you come back with the big sheet that says it's five, time, five times more search volume on this term, right? Indisputable? Exactly. Great. There's Bill Muller, the data man from iProspect, <laughs> giving tips to CMOs here at Search Engine Strategies New York 2009. Thanks again. My pleasure. Thanks, John. Stay tuned for more.